Well, good morning, everyone out there in internet land. It is Pastor Andy coming at you again with another uh, Bible story this week for all the kiddos out there and the parents and anyone else who wants to join us. It is so good to see you and be with you this week. You are awesome, and I am happy, as always, to get to hang out with you. Uh, how has school been? You've been learning interesting, cool things. You know, sometimes school can be hard, right? Have you ever had a hard class or something that you've taken? Maybe you tried to learn something that was hard. Maybe you didn't get it at first, and so you had to work at it. Now, I know a lot of y'all uh, out there are really smart folks, but even the smartest folks in the world tend to sometimes have hard, to do hard things. And um, in school, you're going to have subjects sometimes or things that you have to do, projects or tests or essays or whatever that you're going to have to do that are not going to be that easy. And it's going to challenge you. Do you know what it means to be challenged? It means that you do something really hard because doing hard things makes us better people. That is what is meant by a challenge. When we are challenged by something, we're doing something that's very hard. Now, the Bible is filled with people that did really hard things. Can you think of any? Well, let's see. I can think of Jesus doing hard things. He went to the cross. That was a hard thing. Um, what else? David. King David. You remember him? Well, he slayed Goliath, right? With the with the little rope thing that, that throws rocks called a slingshot. Uh, he did that, and that was a very hard thing to do. It really scared him to do it. What else? Um, Daniel. Uh, Daniel. The guy that went into the lion's den because he believed in God, that was a really hard thing to do, and yet God brought him through it. Well, today, we're going to learn about another person in the Bible who did a really, really hard, difficult, and challenging thing. And because he did that, God was able to do absolutely amazing things with him. And that person is named da -da -da -da, Moses. Now, I'm sure you remember stuff about Moses. You probably remember him parting the Red Sea or him being a little baby in a basket floating down the river and stuff like that. Moses is a pretty big deal in the Bible. He's one of the main characters. Um, and he is the person who God uses to free his people, the Hebrews, uh, from slavery in Egypt. I'm sure you know the story if you've seen the movie Prince of Egypt before. It's really good. So we're going to read a little bit about Moses today and how God used Moses. And God used Moses' challenges, the things that were hard for him, in order to do amazing, miraculous, and awesome stuff in the world. And so we're going to listen together for God's word. When Moses was still alive, the Hebrew people were also called the Israelites. And many Israelites were slaves in Egypt. Now, you know what a slave is. A slave is someone who, um, who it's a really bad thing. It's um, when someone is captured and they're made to work really hard uh, and you don't pay them and you don't treat them very nice and you say that they belong to you. And it's really not fun. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing. But people used to do it a lot. And so the Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. Moses and his brother Aaron were their leaders, the leaders of the Israelites. And they both went to Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt. And they told Pharaoh, our God says for you to let my people go. Pretty brave thing he did, if you think about that, right? Now Pharaoh said, I don't believe in your God. Now go and get back to work at being slaves. Hearing Pharaoh say this, God said to Moses in a loud thundering voice, 
Watch what I will do to Pharaoh. He will let my people go. And tell my people that I will free you all and bring you back to the land that I promised to your great-grandfather Abraham. Because they had been slaves for such a long time, it was really hard for the people to believe Moses. So God ordered again, saying, tell Pharaoh that he needs to let my people go. And Moses, worried that Pharaoh might not listen to him, but, but, but still Moses did what God asked. So here you have some pictures, right? So you got ah, you got Pharaoh over here wearing the weird hat. It's like a crown that they used to wear. It looks really, really funky, huh? And you have Moses. He's yelling at him. And then you have some some of the some of the Israelites over here doing some really hard work. They're 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 enslaved. Now what Moses did was dangerous. You don't just go to a king and get into his face and say, hey, my God, who, by the way, I know you, Mr. King, don't believe in, but that God is telling you that he wants you to free his people or he's going he's gonna to mess you up. He's going to really mess you up. I would be a little scared if I went into somebody's house and told them that, wouldn't you? Like I'd be afraid that they were gonna, they were gonna kick me, kick me in the bottom or something, and just throw me on out the door, or, or, or throw a pie at me, or whatever it is that, that pharaohs do to people they don't like. I'm not really sure. I've never met one, but I would be really afraid. It would be a really big challenge for me to go and do that, and yet Moses, who is afraid, he's he's afraid. He's scared. But he still listens to God and does it, right? He not only does he does it, do it once, he does it twice. And God uses Moses to convince Pharaoh eventually to let the people go. Now, Pharaoh's not the best guy in the world, and he's really dishonest, and he's kind of just a jerk, you know? He, he's a, uh, a duty head or something. I don't know what words kids say nowadays. But he's not the best type of guy so he goes back on his deal a bunch and he chases after them and tries to, to get them back and god you know god does some more stuff to to save his people from pharaoh but the point is this that as people who listen to god god is not always going to call you to do easy stuff with your lives so what's easy um sleeping in all the time is easy right uh, not doing your chores is easy because you, you get to be lazy. Only playing uh, the things you want to play and not playing the things other people want to play. That's easy. It's easy to be selfish. It's easy to be mean to people. It's easy to, to get your way all the time. But I don't want to be and I don't want you to be a person who is selfish, mean, or gets their way all the time. Because people like that... They make God really sad because God doesn't want us to be selfish or mean or to get our way all the time, all the time. God wants us to be kind and loving and generous and to serve other people and to love them just as God loves us. And that's really a hard thing to do sometimes, isn't it? Because there are other people in the world who don't think like we do or maybe don't try as much as we are trying. And they may not accept the challenge to be loving or kind or generous to people, including you. And they may kind of be mean to you and they may not like that you're such a nice person. And that's going to be really hard. It's going to be a huge challenge in life for you. Um, and yet, God will get you through it, and God will use you every time that you show God's love to another. And every time you do something, whatever it may be, that is challenging for you, whether it is taking 
an extra hard class or doing that extra chore for your mom or your dad because you know that they really need help with it. Those, th those things are hard, but God is going to use you when you do those things. And we do them because we know that God wants us to, because it makes God happy, and God, in turn, helps us become happy. Because when we show love to others and are kind and generous, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are going to love you back. And then you're going to be very, very rich. Not rich with money, necessarily, but rich with love and with friendship. And that is going to make your life amazing. Believe me. So go out there. Wherever you are this week, whatever you're doing, whatever you're learning, find a thing that is hard for you to do. Find a thing that is challenging and do it. Or at least try. Even if you fall down, even if you can't do it the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth time, if you keep on doing it, you're going to do it eventually. And uh, not always doing things right the first time uh, is okay. That's, that's just fine. You just can't give up. you got to keep on doing the challenging thing. And that will get you really far in life and will make you really happy eventually. Believe me, it pays off. Well, my friends, as always, I have been Pastor Andy, you have been you, and I am so happy and blessed to call you, each of you, my friends, and, and I hope you call me your friend, too. Until next week, when we come back to another story, I'll be seeing you. Have fun out there. Challenge yourselves. Bye-bye now. <laughs>